Ugly solar panels in uh, Canyon View Estates. Everybody have seen those? Yeah. Aren't they beautiful, guys? Oh, aren't they beautiful? Well, you know what? The story is even more beautiful than the solar panels. Okay? Uh, this is the before and after. You can see that one time the ground had a, had a nice shape to it. It had trees and stuff on it. And then on the, um, on the right side, you can see what it looks like now. Okay? Um, and they had public meetings about it. You know, they, they all got together. They had a public meeting. They were told there's nothing that uh, anybody can do. Um, you, if you want to, um, if, if, if the only thing that you can do is uh, sue the owner. So they were talking about putting money together. I don't know what they ever did, uh, but that's the way it was. And here's another view of these panels. And this is just the view, this local right there. But these things are so visible in our valley. Um, like um, at Anne Marie's house up on um, up, uh, up on Shangri La, you can see them. You can see them uh, if you're going down Soledad Canyon, and uh, just at the bridge, you can look over and you can see them. This doesn't just devalue the property uh, by the homes that are there. This kind of this kind of hurts the whole valley. So, evidently, um, you know, we, they talked about it, and and uh, at the city council meeting on August the 22nd. Bob Keller said, well, folks, he, we had a sweet Lord moment. And uh, he said, well, you know, there's nothing we can do about it. We find out about these things uh, just about the same time as you do. So I'm going to go and uh, I've sent some letters up north uh, telling people that uh, uh, how unhappy we are with the situation and, and asking what they can do with them, but really uh, it, it's out of our hands. So when I did that, I was kind of confused because I had seen some other articles, too. And uh, so what I did was I, I did a public records request, and I said, I want to see these letters that went up north and, you know, just see how, object how much and how valiantly objected. And, in fact, what they were, were they were four letters. They were a form letter sent to the elected officials, Wilk, Lackey, um, Stern, um, Acosta. And, and basically what they talked about is they said, you know, under the current law, uh, it, the, it is the jurisdiction of the Department of Housing and Development to review and approve the installation of solar panels uh, in uh, uh, mobile home parks. The concept process does not provide an opportunity for local input uh, to allow for consideration of unique local circumstances. Um, and then he asked um, to ensure that the, that, the, that the process is comprehensive, uh, at the very least, contact cities in a collaborative way so that um, they can ensure local circumstances are considered. Now, I don't know who he talked to before he wrote that letter, but that is completely untrue. They do not have the total ability to go do those, do those kinds of things. And even uh, if we would, if you, on June 28th, uh, 2017, Perry Smith, on the KHTS guy, he wrote an article about this. And in the article, it talks about uh, that they went and they interviewed um, a gentleman named, or a lady, named Ger Gerberding uh, in, in the state office. And he said that they are supposed to consider uh, the local and county ordinances that would be applicable. He said, if, you know, that, that's one of the things they're supposed to do. And he said the city of Santa Clarita official confirmed that numerous uh, complaints but they had sent a city inspector on the site while the project was, in, was, was going to ensure that they had a permit from the state. Um, I, I don't see how he can say it just appeared and he didn't know anything about it. The city knew exactly when it was going in, right? But it got a little worse than that. So you know me. I like to go do a little research now and then, and I decided that I would, I would you know, Tipped the keyboard on the computer, and um, I and uh, I, I found out some stuff. So I went and I talked about it at the city council meeting, uh, just at the last city council meeting, as a matter of fact. And and what happened was, uh, uh, it it must have taken me at least five minutes to find this out. Is that I went to the state um, um, website, and I went to the um, the uh, the uh, the Department of State Housing and Community Development. And in it, it says, this, these are the rules and regulations that uh, you need to, uh, to follow 
If you are going to improve a mobile home park um, from, the, from the standpoint of, of buildings or uh, from the standpoint of utilities and other things, but those two in particular, because we are talking about utilities, and they pointed to a 22-page pamphlet. That's the front page of it. Uh, unfortunately, it's white, you know, but on white. But you, you can see the, uh, uh, it, it looks exactly like that. And when I opened up the pamphlet, I found that there was a checklist. I know that's an eye chart. We'll, we'll, we'll blow it up here in a minute. I know that's an eye chart. But there was a checklist of what, what you should do. And the very first thing on that checklist was uh, page one, item one, obtain approval and signature from the local planning department on the mobile home and recreational vehicle uh, government agency approval form or equivalent document. So the very first thing they're supposed to do is go to local planning and say, can I do this? And there's another piece that goes in a little farther back that says, if it affects grading and it, and it, it affects drainage, and, and that picture certainly looked like it would affect drainage, you have to go get building and safety approval, local building and safety approval. So I asked those questions at the city council meeting, and nobody knew anything about it. They, 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 they had never seen it before. They said, I didn't know that, right? So um, I gave a, a copy, a 22-page copy to the city attorney, and I emailed the, uh, the, the pamphlet to each one of the council members and Tom Cole in, uh, in planning and saying, well, well what, you know, and I'm going to go back to them and say, all right, guys, now what are you going to do about it? Because um, I asked who in planning signed this off. And Stripland says, oh, nobody in the city signed it off. Well, if nobody in the city signed it off, they didn't have the, uh, the proper signatures, how did the state approve it? Why don't you go back and ask them that question, right? But they didn't know anything about it. So they said they would look into it. But just like Mr. Reynolds talked about a little while ago when he said he went to them and then it was silence for a few weeks, well, I think the same thing was going to happen. But in this case, uh, Mr. Sutton, I have given this information to your reporter who will go ask the proper questions and dig into this farther. But this is absolutely, uh, in my estimation, uh, something that we as a city should be very ashamed of. Yes, Doug. Well, there you go. Isn't that amazing? Woohoo!